during Rogue Lynch's time alive, there were many things players did not know about or did not have access to. I covered some of these items and objects in my rarity tier list videos, which at the time were my most popular videos. As Rogue Lineage approaches its 3 year release anniversary, I decide that I will give my final love letter to the game by going over everything that people considered rare, mysterious, or strange. This is the Rogue Lineage Rarity Compendium. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Natural Essence was a usable item that gave you Verdian, and in turn would allow anyone to use Snap Verdian as well if you trained it. This item was apparently only obtainable if a developer would give it to you. This was before Druid was even added to the game, and the devs such as Eptorian would give these out to players making their builds much more potent. These artifacts would be acquired through winning competitive conquests, with either the house lord or a random member from that house, if the lord wasn't on the team, getting a GUI that let them choose between getting a random item or everyone on the team losing a death. Eventually, these rewards would be disabled to never be re-added in the future. Those who still had the reward on them or used the item got to keep it, making it an extremely rare sight to see for the years to come. Blood Ring would give those using a fist class the ability to still back their health with their fist or abilities. The most notorious user of this being Roy Haru or Itagaki, where we see in his videos that healing stacks the more you hit with your moves as well, making this a pretty powerful artifact to obtain. Dark Blood allowed the user to gain 50 more health, more regeneration, and a speed buff during the nighttime. It also gave you the downside of being weak to Opal and past Markinti. There was no sort of cooldown on it as well, so you could just spam it. The thing about Dark Blood was that it was supposed to be vampire progression, and if you weren't a vampire, it was not going to work, but that is not the case today. The last thing is that apparently there are people who got K artifacts without their health being removed. This was eventually changed. Liquid Life was a wave zero potion that allowed you to get a life by drinking it. This was only drinkable by constructs, as the toxicity was too much for other races to drink it. This was most likely the reason it got removed. The ingredients to make this potion was known by Euro at the time, but apparently he claimed that the recipe had changed after he figured it out before it was even removed. The working theory was that it was originally four crown flowers, but it's impossible to know for sure. In Rogue Lineage, there are three different types of gate. The original white gate, the backfire red gate, and the rune casted black gate. There was an image posted of a different sort of gate a while back by Raguzer of what looked to be a black gate with the rune symbol of the regular gate but in green instead. This gate was more than likely a dev spec that allowed the character, Rune Master Elden, to gate to specific locations. However, there is also a chance that it was an in-development gate of the current rune cast gate but with a different design. This was a unique potion that was a dev given item. It was said that drinking this potion would give you Florian, however, the potion did not do anything according to others, which is what I agree with. When the potion is drunk today, it doesn't do anything. Originally, it was made by a Photoshop meme by Bobby, and the dev then actually made it into a potion in-game. The potion was then given out at random by devs. According to Archmage, the potion is still brewable to this day. It is just that the ingredients required to make this is impossible to figure out, as it's 16 ingredients long. The plague was a side effect of getting hit with Doc's spec ability called Infertare, and once hit with it, you would have the pumpkin rot. This causes you to stand still, grabbing your head every 30 seconds for a couple of seconds, which lasted an hour. The thing is, there was supposed to be a potion that would cure the plague. Doc had given various clues as to what it may be, as it was craftable according to him, but I still have not seen one screenshot of that potion today. Florin was considered a race that was obtainable through drinking Falara's blood, however, this is actually false. Florin was just uptorn on a scroom with a flower instead of a scroom head. This is further proven by the fact that there is no Florian name in the files for the race category. There is, however, a Florian outfit that gives lots of speed and health regen. This is also the same for the armor in Rogue Survival. There was an unminable ore behind the wall at the Decaying Isle. It was unknown for a while what this ore did, and if it was ever going to be added to the game. However, this ore was left over from Rogue Survival, and Decaying Isle used to be part of the game as well. The devs simply forgot to take out the ore from Rogue Lineage itself. The coolest part about the Nightstone ore was the fact that Nightstone weapons actually used to exist in Rogue Survival as well, something we unfortunately do not see in the game today. Whenever there was a player that for whatever reason would need to get his race changed by Archmage due to a bug with the race change game pass, what would occasionally occur is a mix between the two races together, forming a hybrid. An example of this is the Castellan Construct Gain, which is impossible to get without the dev temporary. Snake World had a multitude of specs, with one being his interesting character model that we would also see in the use of the Uber Bard quest. His character's name was Bonezo, and his abilities would include giving you max insanity, turning you completely black, and sending you to Castle Rock. 
he could also teleport in front of the rift and those who would follow his portal would instantly be killed by the void. Just thought I'd mention that you actually didn't turn into a new race, it was more so a side effect of getting all those insanities from Snake World. There were specs that allowed users to carry guns, however this is only seen with Par himself. The main two were the sniper, which could one shot pretty much even uber sigils. The second was the glock, which shot a lot faster but did a lot less damage. Shirosama had the interesting ability of being able to give weapons to players. This would allow for unique combinations of classes that had otherwise seemed impossible, an example being a druid having a blacksmith hammer. He would also have other specs such as taking over someone's body and having the ability to chain people and stun them. Rune Master Elden was one of Rag's lore characters in the game, who had the ability to give runes to players. The ability to use runes was overshadowed by the fact that they weren't mastered and would break your leg after use, but it was still cool to see non dinakiris or non-Dark Sigils use runes. Falara's incarnate was someone named Sprano, who originally won the potion as a giveaway after Falara's blood was made as a meme. Sprano was given the Falara's incarnate name by a developer and the rest was history. As to how he got the ability to get all those other specs, that will remain unknown, though he was either given it by a dev or he turned to a white hat. The developer Dex had the ability to shoot out lightning that would chain to someone else if they were nearby. He would also have a passive stun that would shock everyone around him every 5 seconds. The specs were unfortunately never turned into an edict. The King's Scroom was a dev spec that was there before the Scroom Prince came to be. The developer Ethnic was the one who was the Scroom King, and he disappeared due to making a deal with Ardor according to the lore, which only leaves behind the Prince of Scrooms. It was unknown what special abilities the King of Scrooms had. Jester Edict is an interesting case, as there are two different versions of Jester Edict with one having time stop and the second one having time erase. The old method was said to be pickpocketing 3,000 silver off of someone and then wiping both you and said player that was pickpocketed by backfiring gate. The validity of this claim is questionable, as it was said that edicts did not require artifacts to obtain. At the end of the day, Jester is now only seen on a few accounts, either given by devs or by the few who have successfully managed to figure out the method to obtain it. Raguzer gave his character Lannis some powerful abilities, such as the ability to use Shadow Tendrils, the ability to summon Cursed Manus Day, Melodic Deterra, and being able to give everyone a special type of combat tag that would wipe them if they died. Archmage had the abilities to use a stronger Madiri and heal any injuries the player had, which would store the injury. He could also shoot out a beam that gave an injury to a player, more than likely one of the injuries that he had stored. Mori was a god spell that would insta-kill the player if not blocked by Mage Shield. Many people just did not have this spell, making seeing someone with Snap Mori even more the spectacle. It was told that Snap Mori also did not have a dedicated snap percentage, making it dangerous to try and use, which is more than likely the reason why we see a Dinakiri using rune casting to use the Snap Mori. Pondus was a spell that could slow you down if held out, and the snap version could stack the slow onto the person who it is used upon, and it stacks until the point of not moving. Howler Summoning was an obtainable spell by getting 50 Howler Fangs and gave you the same Howler Summoning that Ultra Necro has today. This, like the others, was removed from the game, only for it to be kept by Roy Haru as a spec. Melodic Deterra was a spell that was basically just a resized Verbis. It was quite big and it broke your leg if you got hit by it. The spell was only usable by developers. Helion Breakthrough would basically give you an 8 gates like buff, and it was stackable. It would buff your damage and speed, but costed you 20% of your health to use, and some considered it pretty bad as well. This is maybe the reason why they replaced the move with Demon Flip instead. This would also be the spec that your role would have on his character, except it was white and named Ira. Altum Shroud was a Dinakiri racial passive that gave you the shadow from Spy, as a racial ability. Another thing that Dinakiris got back then was the ability to go through dark social mirrors, but this was later removed and replaced with runes. Poison Respirer was a variant of the regular Fire Respirer that you would get by being a purple Casperin. It would apply poison and would ragdoll if landed, but eventually was removed for unknown reasons. There were two old Azul methods, the first being that you would have to backfire gate into Lucifer's office and pay 2000 silver in order to get the Azul race. This was pretty risky and was most likely the reason it got changed to the second method, which was a quest. The requirements to complete this quest included getting 10 Howler Fangs, 1 Nightstone, and finally 1 Rift Gem. You would talk to multiple NPCs around the map, turning in these items, with you finally talking to Lucifer and Sky Castle at the end. This was also eventually removed, and now we have the current K method. Originally found in Castle Rock, this die was made by using the Frost Princess plant, and was removed from the game, making this the rarest die besides the Halloween event dies. When using this flower in a cauldron, it would produce a blood red color, applying that color to your armor as well. Once removed, those who still had it in their inventory would keep it or attempt to dupe the item. Sometimes when wiping from K, you get a sound that would go Another sound that was rare was the sound that would rarely play when you would use feed as a vampire that would go 
Spaghetti. The last special sound that would play was the sound of you throwing a pebble at a player, and it sounded like. Not much was known about the baby howler. It was once introduced by Rag in the Discord, but there was no other mention of it afterwards. The chicken mob was supposed to be a source of food, as there was a poll in the updates channel asking the community what they would want as a source of food. We also see fishing in the poll, which was somewhat in K, but never became a feasible feature. It would also appear that it would be a joke that the chicken would one day be added as a feature in Rogue Lineage. There also used to be a sand dragon at the burial grounds. It was pretty much exactly like the ice dragon, but for some reason, it was much buggier. Due to its nature of being extremely buggy, it got removed and was never re-added. An image was posted by Raguzer in the updates channel showing what looks to be a new spell of some sort. It looks similar to Snap Tenebris due to the fact that there were orbs floating above and around the character. However, it was never mentioned after this post, and to this day, it is still unknown what it is. Even Archimage doesn't know what it is. Originally, Dillahan used to be quite rare. However, with the last Halloween update, a lot more people have access to it, not making it as rare as it once used to be. The reason it was so rare in the past was a lot of exploiters actually had Dillahan, which they eventually decided to purge. Seraph was a dev slash dev given race. The race's abilities would allow you to have gate on spawn and use an ability named Angel Drop to land anywhere on the map when you spawn in. The only two non-dev players to acquire this are Riavolu and Voxus. Greater Navarins are unique Navarins that have different names, ranging from the numbers 1 to 10. They would also be able to use the ability Consume on Nox players and steal all of their abilities, while the move Jack steal the Nox player's entire looks, including the armor, health, and stats. Templars were a removed race that had the racial passive of unlocking mana-related abilities like Mana Run faster. They also had a longer mana climb and the Dezin's immunity to mind spells and traumas, which Dezin originally did not have. Due to the racial passive not being too useful, Templar was eventually replaced with Ashen. When this occurred, Hasselden's red hair was removed and replaced with the hair color we see today. Despite being removed, we still see a few examples of Templars existing in the Rogue Lineage universe. The Thanos event was preceded by another event called the Thanos Snap, where a bunch of people in-game lost a life, making a good amount of players also wipe, because of Raguzer shutting down the game to make Phoenix Downs two lives, and then reverting this update immediately as well. Due to this, Raguzer had added Thanos into the game in the Purgatory to give players who had wiped a free restore by talking to him, and you would get four lives on top of that. Lots of people had wiped their characters just to get the four lives if they were on three or two lives. This only lasted for an hour. This was a short-lived event that only existed for the closed community members of Rogue Lineage. The only known thing that was added during this event was this particular face. This was an April Fool's event done by Archmage as he had previously done for his other games such as Tales from the Valley, where he turned it into Tales from the Hood or turning Tales from the Valley into Australia. Hero Mode was a game pass that was supposed to make Rogue Lineage easier in some way, as you talk to the Wayfinder in Purgatory and pay 250 Robux to spawn in with a character with special cosmetics that would also give you 2 times EXP, but you would only be able to have 2 lives. A lot of players immediately viewed this as pay to win, and so the mode got removed very quickly. There was a hidden room that you could glitch into with a bug at Decaying Isle. This room contained an NPC looking at a monitor that had the Tales from the Valley logo on it. Nothing else was really here besides that. Before Scroomville became Scroomville, the old area was known as the Kingdom of Scrooms. After this area got replaced with Scroomville from a lore event, there was an area that was originally connected to Scroomville called the Scroom Forest. It was blocked off in a later update and the blocked off area was eventually removed as well. There was nothing even really in the Scroom Forest anyway. There was a red barrier similar to the orderly barrier that would only allow cameos to pass through. The only instance of this being seen was at the Construct Lab entrance into Castle Rock. Only Landis himself was able to change the barrier to allow others to pass through it. Old Thomas Pit used to be a lot smaller and required super classes as sacrifices, making getting Thomas a lot more difficult. During this time, many people did not even know what was behind the Thomas door due to the difficulty of getting the sacrifices. In the hidden hall, there used to be a hidden staircase behind a wall in one of the rooms. Upon further investigation by exploiters, it led to nothing, but it would have been cool to see otherwise. Since the Halloween event was temporary, the items you got during it would be unobtainable by others if they didn't get it, making the unique cowls, spells, and pumpkin chairs exclusive to those who got it with the candy points during the event. This would also include the unique dye colors that came out during the event as well, such as the light green or light blue. At the time, no player had became a cameo, and the White King's amulet had not yet existed. We would see one of the first, if not the first, cameo made in a video. The original method was to have Lannis himself turn you into a cameo. If you gave Raguzer a Philosopher's Stone, he would grant you a wish. One of the wishes would include the ability to turn into a cameo, which is what the Scrim did in this exact video.
Rogue Survival was a closed community game that existed before Rogue Lineage even came to be a thought. While the gameplay wasn't too different, a large majority of the content in the game did not make it to Rogue Lineage, and it was mostly just a roleplay experience. Some examples would include the Scroom Gate, a progression of Scroom that never made it to the real game. There are various mobs that did not make the cut, either because they were too buggy for even Rogue Survival or did not fit the theme of Rogue Lineage. Some examples would include the Shark and the Chocobos. The higher weapon tiers of Rogue Survival also did not make it to Rogue Lineage. This would include the previous mentioned Nightstone weapons, but also two other weapons made from ores named Coronite and Mirror Ore. It would have been cool to see these as weapons in the real game. Back then, anyone could use god spells, as it was not locked to super mages and above. They were also able to have observed block due to being able to learn it at Phalions. Those still with the god spells as non-mages cannot use the god spells unfortunately for them. There were different methods for obtaining a soul and sword with other classes back then, the main of which being you would wipe your character after disarming your soul and sword as a sigil, as back then soul and sword was disarmable, and then you would pick up your sword after getting your ultra class, which most of whom were druids or dark sigils. Now that the sword is soul bounded, this is impossible to do. Uberbard used to be an obtainable class in K, where you would have to record yourself beating a special quest which was just basically playing Osu. Eventually Uberbard would be nerfed and removed due to being too powerful. The Golden Fiddle was given to the first player who successfully recorded themselves being the Uber Bard quest. Apparently, it increased the range at which the Bard songs would be effective. Church Knight was considered too powerful as a super class, so the devs decided to remove the chain pull ability and add it to the Deep Knight's move list, giving those who were hybrids of the Church Knight class earlier an exclusive hybrid that was considered powerful by many. There was a glitch that allowed you to get Tomless and Abysswalker at the same time, but it was patched pretty quickly. Even if you try to get Tomless today and plan on just not dying, the Tomless is removed the second you join another server, and you are unable to go back into the void to get your Abyssal Greatsword. Back then, if you were a Gain and became a Construct, you would be able to obtain the Gain armor as a Construct, which was really powerful as you could also be a Vampire as well, while still having the Gain armor. According to Doc, there was actually a method to obtain Vampire as a Gain. This was originally supported by the fact that there was a white hat expert named Egg who had also gotten it as well. However, this turned out to be false as it was simply the fact that Egg was given it by a developer and Doc was doing a little bit of trolling. Unfortunate for those wishing to become a Gaian vampire. The person known as Euro used to have every super class as there was no limit on how many you could get back then. Using this and getting help from his house, he would use it to terrorize Sentinel. So much so that a new path was actually opened up which is now known as the crack in the wall. He was known as the Mad King of Sentinel. The original Uber Sigil had different abilities than the one we see today. Some examples would include the Rod of Narsa originally being a beam of light that had a much lower cooldown and allowed you to infinite combo easily as well. Passive abilities like high regeneration in the sun and being in the sun made you a lot more tanky too. Lastly, it basically had an ultimate ability that would rain down light from the skies and do a ton of damage if landed. Unfortunately, when Sigil got reworked, no one kept the old Sigil moves. While I could not find any footage, it was said that there was apparently someone out there who had all three Ultra Spy paths, most likely due to a bug. It used to be the case that you couldn't get Scroom names, but then it was changed that everybody could start getting Scroom names again, making the non-Scroom names the actual rare thing. The only other example of a rare Metascroom race would be Metascrooms who were cameos that kept their cameo name. Other non-race names would also include Navarins, Fisherins, and Azels. Some rare names were locked to specific races and were later removed from the game. This would include Silver, Lucifer, Beezlebub, Senshi, and Ishmael. Buggy Beezle would be given to you by Archmage if you were caught abusing a bug. An example of this being those who had the Ultra Illusionist class, but also had another super class with it as well. Not many facelesses in the game still have the old faceless man name, which was the original name of the faceless one. One of those who still has it left is known as Faceless Man Ruin. The Dark Sigil title, One Who Laughs, used to be known as He Who Laughs, and then They Who Laughs for a short bit. The Happy Man was a title Uber Facelesses would get. This was a mistake and it would be made that if you talk to your Uber Faceless trainer, the title would be changed. The devs added a new move for Uber Facelesses to get, to get their titles changed. Flying Mushroom God allows its user, Prince Pinky, to teleport him and screams around him to any area he saw, similar to the Spy's Wraith. There is also an advanced version of this called the Flying Flower God that worked on anyone. Finally, Prince Pinky had a better snap for Flora called Scroom Flora. Thank you guys so much for watching this Rogue Lynch Compendium. This took me a good amount of time to make, so if you really did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I'll be seeing you guys later. Peace.